Why in common speech we do not refer to the prophets of the Old Testament as saints? For example, St. Abraham, St. Moses, etc. Well, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken, it could be more common in the East to refer to them by the title of saint. Okay, But in the West, at least, uh, we have generally reserved the title of saint for someone, it has come to mean somebody who is canonized as being in heaven even now. Now we know the just souls who lived on earth before the sacrifice of our Lord did not enter heaven until he had made the sacrifice on the cross. In fact, uh, St. Peter tells us that after our Lord's death on the cross, his soul went to the limbo of the just where all of those just souls of the Old Testament were waiting for this great moment of the redemptive sacrifice being offered. And our Lord personally came to them and announced to them the gospel, that is the, the news of the redemption. And uh, our Lord took them from that place, you know, he released them from that place. So we know that they are in heaven. I mean, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so on. We, we, Moses saved his soul, and, and David, and, and Ruth, and Esther, and so on. But we don't customarily refer to them as saints because they are from the, from the Old Testament. However, we do call, refer to St. Joseph, who died before the redemptive sacrifice of Christ, as St. Joseph. St. John the Baptist. And St. John the Baptist, ex exactly. And uh, so it's a matter of like, common parlance. You know that even... St. Paul, in writing the salutations to some of his epistles, greeted the saints who are here and the saints who are there, right? Mm -hmm. And he was speaking in the broad sense of those who are in the state of God's grace and who have faith and hope and charity and uh, so on, and while they're still here on earth, you know. Uh, and he asks, uh, he assures them of prayers, and uh, he commends himself and others to their prayers, which shows he recognized they have the power to invoke God on their behalf, on the behalf of others. So, uh, again, I have no idea where Protestants can possibly get their rejection of the Catholic terminology of saints and our concept of saints as those who have actually died in the grace of God and are now in heaven. The only way I can think they can justify their quote-unquote theology on this is their, 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 their complete false idea of heaven. You know, Martin Luther said that in heaven we're still snow-covered dung hills, he said. So they don't even believe in the sanctity of the human soul, so maybe they think the saints in heaven are nothing but that, and there's no sense invoking them. Uh, Catholics understand the saints are those who died with faith, hope, and love for God, and are with him in heaven in a great act of love, and they're united with God in a supreme act of love. In fact, that they love him with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, as Christ said. Mm -hmm. And that they're very much aware of us, and, and, uh, and that uh, they can pray for us, and we, we can be, ask their prayers. As St. Paul prayed for others and asked them to pray for him as well. So, with regard to St. Paul using the word saints, he was referring to those who were here on earth, who are you know, faithful to our God, faithful to our Lord, and in His grace. And we apply to that, that term, especially in the, in the strictest sense, to the human souls that are in heaven right now, have been saved and are united with God in the beatific vision. Even the souls who have been saved and are in purgatory, we do not we refer to as saints. They're not canonized. In the earliest days of the Church, there was not a canonization process as we've known it. Um, because with the church with persecution and so on, I mean, there was a development uh, in the church, you know, of our procedures and ceremonies and, and structures of government and so on. That took time, but that's perfectly understandable. Couldn't have been otherwise. There were those who were canonized by the church in the sense that almost by popular recognition of their sanctity, uh, they came to the notice of church authorities, and their their invocation and their veneration was approved mm -hmm. by church authorities. So it became, in a sense, quote unquote, canonized before there was a canonization process. We talk about referring to saints as human souls who are in the, lived in the state of grace, died in the state of grace, or in God's 
a beatific vision now, but we also refer to St. Michael the Archangel, St. Gabriel the Archangel, St. Raphael the Archangel, and so on. So these are not human. They're, they're angelic, but they're spirits that are blessed, and they are in the glory of God. So you see, the, the use of the word saints has a, has a strict sense in, in, the, in the broad sense, and the way it has been used in the church, actually, customarily, I mean here custom plays a big role, why in the West we usually don't refer to the holy souls of the Old Testament as being saints, but those who are related to our Lord in the New, in the New Testament, mentioned in the New Testament, because they were part of our Lord's own lifetime, part of our Lord's own life. St. Joseph and St. John the Baptist are referred to as saints, although they died before Calvary, their place. And even angels are referred to as saints. So, um, generally speaking, uh, we can, we can speak as St. Paul did. We could consider that any, any of the souls that are in the state of God's grace are holy souls, in the broad sense of the term, right? The souls on earth, as St. Paul spoke of them, who are in the state of grace. Uh, the souls in purgatory who are all in the state of God's grace, and they've all been pronounced saved, but they do not have perfect love for God yet. And they still have to expiate you know, temporal punishment due to their sins here and the souls in heaven. But uh, even there, uh, in the strict sense of the word, if the term is applied to those who are in heaven right now with God in the beatific vision.